everybody, it's me, it's uh, Andy, uh, trying out a new little thing here. We're doing a little bit of a vlog here, a classic YouTube move. Um, today, I wanted to start this off, uh, the first episode of this um, uh, semi-regular vlog. Uh, I want to talk about Magic Arena, uh, MTG Arena. I, I, I don't actually, surprisingly, I'm seeing not that much about it around. I don't know, maybe there's not that much to say. But anyways, I thought... Um, uh, maybe it's because, you know what, I follow a lot of Commander content, and uh, it seems like they, with so far with this, the impact on Commander is fairly minimal. But we got to talk about it. It's pretty big. Uh, let's let's get into it a little bit. Uh, Magic Arena. It looks like um, it's, uh, uh, they say it's a ground up from scratch. It does look like it's um, pretty similar to Magic Duels, uh, which I don't hate. Um, there's some great things about duels, I think, uh, aesthetically speaking. Um, it also looks a lot like Hearthstone. Can't deny that. Um, uh, but first of all, uh, I think when they were talking about their digital product, we were all thinking, is this going to replace Magic Online? Is this going to be a new Magic Online client? I think a lot of us thought yes, and a lot of us thought no. I think it was pretty split, to be honest with you. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, when it comes to replacing Magic Online, it just seems like there were a lot of things that they simply can't do. Uh, there's a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have yous when it comes to, um, uh, replacing the whole system of Magic Online. They're so entrenched in that, like, bizarre runaway program that, has developed the econ an economy of its own and all this kind of stuff based on this like old, we all know about Magic Online. Anyways, um, so, you know, it looks like obviously this is not a replacement for Magic Online. They're going to start from here and go forward. And a lot of people are disappointed with that. And I, I'm a little disappointed as well, I got to say. But, but more so, I think this is the right thing for them to do. It's Magic Online is... Um, a mess. Uh, and I think that while, yes, there should be uh, effort put into fixing that mess and cleaning up that mess and making it as presentable as possible, I don't really fault them from saying, we're going to start from scratch here. We're going to um, create something new that actually will compete with the, you know, competitors, your Hearthstones, um, and so on. So, I, I'm, I'm into it. I think it's a good move. I think it looks good. So let's talk about it a bit. The actual program. The look of it so far, to me, looks great. I don't have a problem with it. It looks very much like Hearthstone, but Hearthstone's a good-looking program. I mean, uh, it's also there's something to be said about familiarity, right? Um, that that game, uh, the, heart, the um, Elder Scrolls one, uh, we see being streamed uh, sometimes... Uh, that game is cool. Uh, it seems good as well. Uh, it looks pretty different, so it's kind of hard to like intuitively know things um, when you're talking uh, when you're coming from a, a base of a different game. So the fact that they kind of stuck with the duels look and and yes, a Hearthstone look, I think that's a positive thing. I mean, um, you're just gonna know what things are doing and and how they look and everything. And that seemed to be a real uh, sticking point for them when they were. You know, when Jimmy was talking to them about the uh, um, uh, about the development of it and everything and how they wanted it to appeal to people. So I like the look. It's colorful. It's It looks fun. I want to play it. Uh, gameplay. The gameplay looked also good, fun, a bit simplistic. Um, they got into it a little bit about the mechanics of, the, of how the gameplay actually works. Uh, during that video, we saw the... Um, it's all stops mode or whatever it's called or the full full control mode right um i this is the part i think that a lot of players are most concerned about because if you've played duels or if you've played duels of the planeswalkers or any of the previous versions you know that the timer based system is in there and uh that's not great um so i'm glad to see that it's like a I'm glad to see that this full control mode is real, and I think most players will probably... Actually, I don't know. I was going to say full. most players would probably play with it, but you don't need to. You kind of F6 it, right? So so hopefully it's a very easy toggle. Um, 
it 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 looked like it was. Who knows though? Um, the timer system. I don't. I didn't. I don't remember seeing a timer system. But when they sort of let things go, uh, I don't know how that worked. I don't know if there was any time to respond or not, or if you have to turn on full control. It's like the idea of stops. They don't. I, I didn't see anything there. There was a little bar along the bottom of the screen. If you saw, it had like it had like the different phases, and I didn't. It didn't. I don't know if it looked like you could put stops on those phases or what. I mean, why not include that? Why not still be able to customize your phase stops? I I, I don't know. I don't understand. Uh, but um, the fact that you can toggle it seems like a positive thing, and perhaps that'll be something that when players get their hands on it uh, in the beta or something, you know, we'll be able to mess around with it. Uh, they'll be able to change things if, if, if it's not working, right? Uh, another thing, of course, everyone's talking about, it's only standard or it's only draft, whatever it is, right? So they're going to... It's starting off and then going forward. It uh, doesn't seem to be having any plans currently for to go, to go backward at all. They want it to be a standard thing. They want it to be a draft thing, sealed, and so on. Um, like I said at the top, I think this is pretty... Um, uh, I think they have to do this. I think they that's part of coding Magic Online is uh, it's, it's very difficult. So going back and including all these old cards, it seems like um, a pretty tall uh, order and uh, pretty tough to do. There's a really great episode and I always refer back to this as a really great episode of Marshall Sutcliffe's sort of um, uh, lost podcast the one for one I believe it's the first episode it appeared in the limited resources like podcast stream and it was with John Laux and John Laux talked about how difficult it is for magic online to integrate the cards from the real life game into its system and uh a lot of people, I think a lot of people who play Magic Online should listen to that episode. It really shone a light on what they have to deal with with this program. Um, now, of course, that doesn't excuse, like, you know, basically starting over and fixing things. But if you listen to it, I think you'll gain a new appreciation for just what they have, just what those people are dealing with and the restrictions that are on them just from a from like a company standpoint from a from a, a time standpoint and all that kind of stuff it's not really making excuses for for the for them or for for wizards or anything like that but um if you go back and listen to that episode it's actually it's it really is an eye opener it's it's quite good and he gets very candid about it um, it's, it's just a good episode of a podcast period. Uh, it's kind of too bad. Marshall didn't carry on with that idea. Side note, uh, and, and talk to magic people. I think he kind of veered in and out of, of using people from magic, um, and, and, and so on. But, uh, but it just didn't catch with a lot of people. I don't think anyways, he's a great interviewer. I gotta say, um, yeah. So old cards aren't going to be in. I, I think eventually this is something you will see. I think what they're going to do and uh, I guess you can call this a bit of a prediction. I think what they're going to do is they're going to start here with standard. They're going to code for standard. They're going to code for the current sets. And I bet you that there'll be flashback drafts. There'll be flashback drafts of sets that they know they can code easily. There'll be flashback drafts and sealed events uh, of, of recent, of more recent sets, I, I would imagine, modern sets. I think coding for modern is something that I think they're going to aim for. I don't think we'll see this in the first year of the program or anything like that. I think that's something for down the road, but I definitely think going forward their 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 I will be on that. And I think like that will be a pretty big victory for them if they can if they can get standard working, if they can get draft and sealed and all that working, and then if they can get modern working, I think that'll be. And I think most of us can agree that that sounds pretty good, right? Um, vintage and legacy, maybe it's a little harder just because of the, it's even more cards. And I know modern, the modern card pool is huge as well, but I think, uh, I think if they can get that within the first, like two or three years of it working or something, I don't know. I don't know. Is that a, is that a crazy timeline? Is that a stupidly long timeline and they should have that before? I don't know. Uh, but it sounds like something that's doable, um, uh, uh with, with time. So, you know, you got. I think you got to look on the positive side of things here, right? Uh, um, and yeah, and and opening, they said. I think they said they wanted standard it to be to be standard ready first, and then they would integrate draft and sealed. If that's the case, I really think. I mean, I guess. I, I guess. 
I, that that's really following Hearthstone, I, I think. Like the standard environment versus getting their like arena, their draft mode. I think draft <clears throat> should be the should be there on opening. It should be right when they launch the draft. Hopefully, it will be. They didn't say it wouldn't, so may, uh, hopefully that's hopefully that's the case. Um, I have no. I have no idea how they're going to do packs. I assume it's just going to be like Hearthstone. You simply buy packs. You crack them. You get them through drafts. You get them through uh, sealed. Um, the secondary market is something that's interesting. I don't know if that will exist. If it will be a, like a crafting thing, you know, with like, um, what are they called? <laughs> in Plants vs. Zombies Heroes, it's called Sparks. I don't know what it's called in Hearthstone. I haven't played in a long time. Uh, but something like that, I can see that being a system just because it's sort of proven to work. People seem to like it. You can basically turn your commons on commons and the rares you don't want into better cards. Um, I could definitely see that working for them. It'd be a real departure from how they like think of things. But I think a lot of this is. I think a lot of this is an, an overhaul on how Wizards views their online presence. As opposed to just emulating their physical card game, they're now starting from a digital standpoint, and they're and they're going from that. So I I think there's some pretty big pretty big changes going to happen. You know, the, we're going to start to see them diverge the Magic Online and this diverge quite a bit. Already, just from physically seeing like how the cards transform when they're on the battlefield, how they don't fully tap, all these little these little things, I think are good signs. The differences, it's hard to accept differences. It's hard for people to like see something different than what they're used to and say, oh, that's actually a good change. I think a lot of this is good. And I and I don't want to be up here just, you know, saying everything's rosy because there's some concerns. There's some things that I wasn't as into. Uh, that thing of the tapping and the, the not, like, why is that? Why don't they just tap it? What do you mean? The guy was like, oh, it looked really weird. It's like, why did it look weird? What are you talking about? Like, that's what they do. That's what the cards do. Does it look... I don't know. I mean, maybe he's right, but I, I thought that was strange. Even Jimmy was like, eh, I like to make them sure that they're fully tapped. Uh, in the same way. That's nitpicking. That's small. Um, there are obviously a lot of other bigger concerns. Um, I, I, financially speaking, is this going to... This like is the how big is this impact going to be on Magic Online? How on the economy on Magic Online? Like if all the drafters move to MTG Arena, what does that mean for card prices on Magic Online? What does that mean for the standard environment on Magic Online? Is that just going to be abolished? Will there be no more draft and standard on Magic Online? No, right? No, because they said it's not a, a replacement. But but is if this. If this new program is 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 everything they say it's going to be, then it sounds like it it is a replacement for those parts of it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I I am optimistic though. I think at least this is something a bit different than what we've what we've seen. Uh, I think it's a real attempt by the company to to really to finally put something up that can compete with with their online competitors. Uh, that isn't based in Magic Online, and it's. I think it's a it's a it's a bold move to not have, you know, to not start with your older sets and things being in, right in the game right away. So, anyways, I, hopefully, fingers crossed. This isn't just a rehashing of Magic Duels, and it has all the same pitfalls. It doesn't. It already doesn't look like that. So I think we're pretty safe there, uh, and hopefully, it go, going forward, it's just good for Commander players. Let's get to that. Let's talk about that. What does this mean for Commander players online? Well, I don't think it means much, uh, sadly. Uh, but, you know, Commander's not much of an online game. Commander is a tabletop game. It's basically a board game. <laughs> you know, it's meant to be played with friends. It's a multiplayer game. It's all about, th it's more about that. It's more about the politics uh, than it is about straight, spiky winning games, right? We all know this. Um, there's obviously a competitive uh, a side to Commander, and I think they will include that. Um, eventually. Actually, no, they probably won't. Commander card pool is probably too big. I doubt, in fact, I doubt they will include it. Uh, unless they do like a commander, uh, you know, like there's a commander version in the game that 
includes the card pool that is available to Arena. Maybe because he did say new formats, right? When they were talking, uh, I can see that being the case, right? Like, you know, modern commander or frontier commander or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Frontier show up, speaking of that. Uh, I know it's not an officially recognized um, format, but uh, I think it makes a ton of sense for the online community. Maybe it's an online-only format. I think that could be a thing. Uh, anyways, what do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, let's get this discussion rolling. This is the point of the vlog. This is what we're doing. Uh, we're chatting. We're having a talk. So we don't get to do that outside of stream, so I wanted to start this up on YouTube. Uh, guess what? I haven't even told Shot I'm doing this. But uh, I'm sure he's gonna love it, and you're gonna see some stuff from him too. So let's uh, let's let's get the ball rolling. First vlog done. Tell me what you think about Magic Arena. Peace. If you want to contact us, I'm at Sean Tabaris. And I'm at Andy Holbone. Send us an email at commandersbrew at gmail.com. You can find out when we go live on Twitch if you follow us at twitch.tv. And if you care to support us on Patreon, check us out at patreon.com. And you can find our decklist on tappedout.net. And if we forgot anything, commandersbrew.com. <laughs>